السلام عليكم uh, everybody my name is Aydel Busidi good morning good afternoon and good evening wherever you are and possibly maybe even good night uh, I will be moderating uh, this particular session which I will talk a little bit more in detail once I introduce our two amazing dynamic and very animated speakers Uh, this session is the third talk in the UAE Korea series in the summer camp as part of the UAE Korea Cultural Dialogue 2020, which aims to nurture cultural and creative collaborations between our very two countries. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have two very animated speakers, um, but I wanted to first uh, talk about what is animation. When researching what animation is and what it entails, you'll definitely find a plethora of information, but with the information that resonated the most with me is what does animation mean to me as a person? We all grew up with it, whether it's through a fantastical journey or a fantasy life. It is essentially the state of being full of life or vigor or liveliness. So starting off, uh, we have Mr. Harry Yoon. Uh, he is an executive producer and marketeer. Harry has held uh, quite a lot of content businesses and strategies of SKB, IPTV platform, almost four years as a chief content officer. He managed acquisitions, programming, as well as investments. Um, before SKB, Harry, as a vice president, led both media and merchandising licensing business at SM SAMG Animation, one of the top edge CGI studios in Korea. Additionally, he is quite experienced in merchandising as well as licensing field uh, with approximately more than two decades within the industry with a heart of entrepreneurship. Um, he has basically in 2001 founded his own animation studio, iMultiPro, and has produced short series animation, Monia, which got an award from the government as the best content of the year. Harry studied history at Korea University. He also attended SEIT program at Stanford Graduate Business School in association with the Korean government. Thank you very much, Harry, for being with us here today. Next up, uh, our very own, almost celebrating 15 years this coming September, best known as the man behind the animated TV series Fridge, Mohammed Saeed Harab is the chairman of Lemtara Art Production and the talented creator of stage shows, feature films, and gaming apps. Uh, Mohammed, as you might know, uh, went through quite an interesting journey to find uh, Farij, as well as several other projects that are currently very popular within the UAE, as well as the regional, and now moving into global. The subject matter of what we're going to cover will be uh, added in shortly, but before we start, I have a very short, shortened video uh, of the Lamtara Studios, which I will air right now. Thank you for that, Mohamed. Um, what I wanted to first uh, drop off as a question, because this particular session is about animation shifting from local to global. We will be discussing animation as an overarching theme, as a medium for cultural storytelling, changing misperception, co-development, and co-production. So the first question is to both our speakers. We'll start off with Mr. Yoon to begin with, and then with Mohamed is, 
could you tell us what is storytelling through the art of animation in your perspective and how has that changed through the years specifically starting with Korea, the wider Asian region, and then globally as well. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Aida. Thank you, Muhammad. And it's my great honor to be with you. And it's great to sharing my experience with the uh, studio in Abu Dhabi. Yes, I mean, uh, it is industry over 20 years, not as animator, but as uh, executive producer and marketing guy and sales force. And to me, storytelling and animation, this is a really uh, interesting subject and also very important subject because we grown up with animation. I did uh, more, than, more than 40 years ago. And so, but I still remember the character, still remember the scene of the animation, still remember the storyline of the animation. Why? Because uh, the story of the animation is too, too strong and because I was so young at that time. So uh, after that, I still, right now I, I watch the animation, but to me, animation is not just for kids. It's like uh, my lifetime uh, content. Uh, so make it short, the storytelling and animation to me is like a lifetime friend. So once you will get friend, you never forget it. That's They're good. always with you, they're always with you. And so the friend has somewhat grown with you as well. And now it's taken a different turn as well. Mohammed, yes, the, <laughs> but great difference is that I'm getting old, but uh, my friend doesn't get old. They get younger. <laughs> yeah, they keep the same, but I'm getting old. <laughs> um, Mohammed, could you, in your perspective, tell us, you know, how, how is storytelling very important in the animation world and how have you managed to overcome it and basically progress it to the stage that it is in today? Well, actually, you know, for us um, in general as Arabs, I think uh, storytelling through the form of uh, animation is something that is of a new experience to us, especially when it's our own stories. As you know, we all grew up watching uh, foreign stories about other cultures uh, uh, through animation. And it was, a, you know, it's, it's um, a mind opener for us. I remember the days when I was a kid watching uh, some uh, Japanese manga uh, and then I see them eating sushi and I did not know what sushi was. It took me 17 years later to understand what sushi is and taste sushi for the first, first time. Also animation offers us a new perspective uh, into, into whatever we're talking about. So a new perspective in, 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 in looking at things versus you know uh, when you film things uh, in reality, they, it might be too rigid or taken too seriously. With animation, it gives you a very fresh perspective. It's also a medium that allows you to tell stories in a way that the audience would connect with and understand very easily and digest also uh, very easily. Um, fortunately for me, my first form of storytelling was through animation and then I moved on to other mediums. And you can tell, although it is, um, you know, it's a labor of love, this, uh, this medium, the, anim the animation medium, but the, the beauty and the simplicity of the messages that can come through can transcend all ages. Uh, all ages. And as he said, it became my friend, Harry said. And I have the same fear, Harry. I, I, my first show was about grandmothers. And as you can see, I'm older than them now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love how you touched upon that point, Mohammed, about uh, us as Arabs uh, and the storytelling concept. Um, one of the things that uh, came out very strongly uh, is that storytelling has always been part, you know, from generation to generation. It's just the mediums and the platforms um, that has taken a different shape and a role. But I think the ideology of shifting a mindset or information or culture uh, into a, a different mindset or has, has completely changed. So um, taking that into, into consideration, um, I want to understand uh, where, what drove you to be in your existing role right now? You know, Harry, you come from a marketing uh, background, you know, and Hamed, 
uh, you know, your background is also very different. It wasn't, you didn't start off saying, you know what, I will be in the animation industry. And also what were the struggles um, that you both had as you went through it, whether it was uh, personal, uh, family, business, uh, and just the general understanding of people on how this industry specifically works. Harry, start with you first. All right. Uh, yes, I think you back 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, uh, I was a guy, still is, who loved watching movie and visual content. I'm so lazy, so I, I, I do not like reading books than watching movies. And the animation, again, back to my kids, I watched the Japanese animation. I thought that's Korean animation, but I watched it and I really enjoyed it. But when I was in the college, I knew that the animation I watched in kids was not Korean animation. It was a Japanese animation, like Muhammad, he watched. And I was thought, why? Why, why I, I didn't have a chance to enjoy Korean made animation? And I'm not a patriot, Ari stands, but uh, it really, uh, you know, thinking about that, the what, why? And, and I had bumped into the chance to be at uh, working at the animation company. It just mm -hmm. happened. And because I was a uh, history, I was a, uh, working at the marketing company. So I thought, okay, why not? Marketing is a, just a tool and we can have it as animation content, as a marketing material. So I jumped into that, that industry and later found out after 20 years, I am the only one after you know, the alumni of my university. I am the only one in the animation industry. So uh, I was a unique, only one. So I have friends, lawyers, doctors, and professors, but uh, animation guy, I am the only one. So I'm happy still, and I will be. Okay, good. <laughs> That's very good. And so did you, did you face any challenges or struggles or resistance um, for you to get into this industry? And if so, what were they? Uh, yes, uh, struggles, challenges. I think that it's like... A, I, I didn't. I didn't struggle with myself to be that animation guy, but I have some challenges. You know, Twenty years ago, when I was in the overseas market, it's really hard to have uh, set up a meeting with uh, uh, overseas global buyers. You know, that was the challenge. So I thought, what, what should I do at the can? I'm very envious. I still remember the time that when I was passing by at the Khan Beach, mm -hmm. there was a people's folks were there and having a lunch, enjoy the champagne and the wine. And man, I want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to be there. I want to enjoy that uh, time with them. But now, yes, I, I enjoy the uh, wine and food and I have a friend. So it took uh, 20 years, yeah. but it's worth to uh, stay and sustain mm -hmm. and uh, finding a way. Yeah. I like that. Mohammed, although I know your story, but the whole world wants to hear, what were your struggles or hurdles? I don't want to say struggles, I want to say hurdles. Um, well, honestly, just it's funny because I, I, I started my um, kind of uh, professional life marketing actually so there's like some some parallels uh, for anybody who works who wants to work in animation start in marketing uh, <laughs> no but it's it's funny because i studied general arts and animation uh, back uh, in boston and when i when i studied that i was the only guy studying art and all my colleagues like all my friends from the country was like they were studying uh, business uh, and you feel left out you feel you feel a little bit <clears throat> are, am i doing the right thing am i doing the wrong thing we were at you know in the age of traditional media so we had 
just one radio station, one newspaper, and one TV station. And um, by the time I came back, I started working in Dubai Media City uh, and <clears throat> in marketing in Dubai Media City. And I was asked to kind of go and explore uh, these six pages of sketches I created, uh, or I sketched in, in one of my classes in, in Boston. And it was the four grandmothers. Uh, uh, and they wanted, they, they was, there was like, the, the biggest struggle I think for us is that we did not know where to start. How do you do this? You know, they don't teach you that in university. They don't teach you how to go about and, and I don't know Mr. Harry back then, maybe he could, he could have helped me, but we did not know where to start. We did not know what is a, a business plan for animation. We did not know what is the process. We did not have enough um, benchmarks. I was the benchmark when I, when I started. So it was really kind of working in a very dark tunnel. And, and although, you know, um, the people did not take you seriously when you speak about the business of making animation, but there was a little bit of curiosity to see how this hamster will do, you know, like how will he do? Uh, um, many people, uh, especially in, in, in the business realm, people who will support you, whether it's the TV station, whether it's the, 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 the fund, the bank and all of those, they, I, they admire you when you're like 25, you want to do a cartoon, but they never know like, you know, good on him if he pulls it off. Yeah. Uh, and, but if he doesn't, you know, it's a cute thing, you know, you, they, they had the patience for a cute, cute project. If, they, if I came in with a cement factory, I think I'll be kicked out like, like from the first meeting. But I think because of the aura of cart cartoons and everybody having this يعني, dream that one day we as Emiratis can have something to see. Um, yeah. I think that helped me a lot. I like I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this point again because um, Harry, you mentioned something about sustaining it, and Mohammed, you talked about how there wasn't a benchmark, uh, especially especially in our part of the world. Um, you know, we used to see animation series um, which had Asian-looking characters. Uh, you know, so Captain Majid uh, are things that we grew up with, uh, but they they you know they were dubbed in Arabic. So. There's a lot of memories uh, because things were done before, even things like Mickey Mouse, for example, where it is animation series, but because they had a lot more time to actually work on it, you know, uh, I think people just know it um, uh, globally around the world, which is quite interesting. So that brings me to the my next question, which is actually the subject, the core subject matter and the theme, which is local to global. Where do you start to get from where you are locally to get to where you are globally as well? And when did you feel um, uh, or what made you feel that you created that switch or that light that went on where the local um, creativity that you developed had suddenly gotten picked up by somebody or picked up by a region or picked up globally for you to be a household name that comes from Korea or comes from the UAE. So, uh, Harry, you always first. <laughs> oh, I'd be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> As a guest. <laughs> yeah, I'm the first. Yes, global and local. That was uh, the, the same question when I am um, in the industry 20 years ago. Because uh, you are very good in, in the local market, mm. but like you and Korea, we only have uh, 50 million population mm. and uh, we always want to go outside. Export is our key factors to, dri to, to drive our industry. So it's like a, our bone DNA you know, to export, go to global. And, uh, but the point is that if you go to global, where is global? Mm. You cannot define, some people say global is US market. Some people say it's a European. Some people say it's all the market except the, your country. Yes. But my experience tell me that there is not a single contest that loved by all or more than 200 countries. Mm. Right? Yeah. So uh, after 20 years of trying to catch something uh, to be a global content. Recently, I defined the global is like, uh, it, that should be the first country 
mm. out of a local country, local market. So if I sell the Korean animation to the Indonesia, then Indonesia is our, our global market. It should be. It should be our first global market. So we have to focus on the first country mm. who love my content. That should be global. And then you can go to the next countries. So uh, to me, local to global and the pro producer's point, we always trying to develop a project targeting the global market. But when I go to the global, the global buyer just say that what happened, what's going on in your country? Hmm. Which means that if you do not make a success, tangible success in your country, yeah. nobody's interested in outside. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a, uh, you have to you have to take a two rabbits at one stone, mm -hmm. one for the local and another also for the global, and that's why animation is very important in this local and global because the character. It shouldn't be Korean character. It, it shouldn't be American character. It, mm. it, it, it should be something. It should be something loved by kids. Yes. So I that like, is why, yeah. That is like why the animation is, is, a, is a very interesting subject. I liked what you said in our talk is that the, the, the cultural story should be yours first before it goes anywhere else. And when we had our earlier talk, and I feel mm -hmm. that, um, when you talk about the local to regional or global shift is that once it makes uh, an impact within your culture, then you're able to actually expand it elsewhere. Do you still believe that's true? Sure. So uh, if, you are, if you are a program buyer in your country, hmm. if I propose you, Ida, this is an animation which is, is very good for your country. Will you buy that? And what you what will be your first question? Harry, how how popular in your country? Yes. That is the first question. So if I said uh, it's not working well in our country, mm. then you said, why should I buy your content if it is not in popular in your country? Agreed. Right? Absolutely. Mohammed, um, Obviously, you started with Fridge and, uh, you know, it took it, it took us by storm, um, which I think is quite interesting. I think everybody, if you're if you're older than the age of 15, <laughs> I think everybody remembers when Fridge came out and then all the other series as well, because um, that was, I think, the biggest impact that we had in terms of the local content creator. But then you expanded. So what was that expansion like and would you uh in you know in contrast or maybe in agreement with harry say that you do feel that you've gone global and how did you make that switch and when did you feel that switch happened so for me the definition of going global uh, uh is slightly kind of the way it depends on the way you see it for mm -hmm. Mohammed harab who's doing a content uh, for the first time let's say like preach we all know that the writers are from the UAE, the actors are from the UAE, the studio that made this uh, show in its initial season is in India, then it moved to Singapore. The ma music composer is somewhere, someone sitting in London. The product by definition is global. So the, the, there are many elements that came together from different parts of the world to make it a global product. So the product is global. The packaging of that product, the, the nice little ribbon that we put in position, is very, very local because, again, I had this passion to do something for my local culture, to archive my local culture. But yeah. because I went too local, and this is uh, as what Harry said, too local, to the extent even that the marketing, the marketing division of the TV station or like the media buying division was like, we cannot sell this product. We cannot sell it to sponsors because it's too local. They won't get you know, the, 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 the big FMCGs won't really touch this. But because it was too local in its offering, it, it, it touched the nerve that, you know, all the other shows around it back then did not uh, offer. To the extent that the first inkling I knew that it might be more than something that is uh, targeted to my country 
is seeing people from the GCC countries around us, people who we usually look at their content and their shows and know their language from there, but let's say Saudi or Kuwait, they started to, to try to imitate what we see as Emiratis. Not just that, I started to see that the show had a lot of traction in other countries, uh, Arabic countries, Syria, Algeria, Libya, people from, I was like, how do you even understand what we say? And then you have a lot of Arab, Arabs that are living in Europe that started to connect with, with this very weird, funky show that is too local. And from, and based on that, and uh, as Harry said very clearly, uh, when, when big companies, when, when Sony, let's say uh, Japan came to, to acquire the show, they asked that same question. How mm. popular is the show with you? And, uh, and I think that's a very big driver. But having said that, you know, the world is getting more and more closer together and we are losing also our sense of culture altogether. Uh, let's say we're becoming one big family here. So I think the next realm is when we offer a product, you know, mm -hmm. it's a product that will definitely resonate with, with all, all, all um, kind of all of the global family. So yeah. the new trend is to see how can we make a common project or a common IP or, or, or a show that works in Japan and Korea in UAE and in the States. And many, many new ones are coming like that. Uh, it's not to say that we don't try to, to honor our culture as well and our storytelling uh, methods, but there is also an, a new room, yeah. uh, a new trend that's coming about, about global shows. We'll definitely touch on that because I have a few questions on the co-production, but there were two questions I wanted to highlight as well. Um, there's a huge misconception, um, I think a lot less now, but there used to be uh, about animation or cartoons, which is what the normal terminology is. People don't really look at animation and think, oh, it's something for adults, is that it's just for children. Uh, but you know, you're, you're, you're two very successful gentlemen, very strong marketing background, who have now created a household name uh, for yourselves, uh, you know, within the realm and the community and the business world, you know, where animation and beyond animation has, uh, has, it's really exemplary. So, you know, what would you say to these naysayers? You know, why do you think people have this conception that misconception that uh, animation is just for kids? Uh, that kind of perspective also happens in Korea too, because uh, my my boy now twenty two years old, and he he's he's grown up with animation, so still he loves big fan of animation. So to his generation, animation is the same, not just for the kids, but for the older generation. But to my generation and, and after older than my generation, they think that animation is just for kids. So you, if you're grown up, do not watch animation. Mm. But it's like, uh, I don't think that uh, we have to put animation that way because that is the way we grow up. That's the way we enjoy our kids mm. uh, when I was kids. So it's like a school that you went in elementary school. But because of the elementary school, you can go to the middle school and then high school. Without the elementary school, there's no middle school and others. Mm. So it's a very essential and the keystone of just the beginning of your life. So that is why animation shouldn't be put aside like, hey, just, just for kids, just for <laughs> young ones, not for the adults grown ups. <laughs> all the men, all the all the men and women, they grown up, you know, after baby. Yes. <laughs> so do not forget where you're from, where you grown up. But also I think there's 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 always a child in us, right? Like there's always a sense of uh uh, of belonging whenever you see a character or you see a storyline so you feel that you can relate to the animation it's it's another way of uh you know we talked about storytelling and uh, cultural repatriation as well you know where you're able to get more from it um what about you Muhammad? do you think uh animation is just for kids and why do you think that's the sentiment that most people have well listen when it comes to us arabs again i'll go to the same 
uh, same same kind of uh, reason. It's the lack of education when it comes to that field because we did not we have not been exposed to this field for uh, enough times. Whereby, if you go look at Japan and and and, and the states, you know, when they do the nuclear bomb training, they show them an uh, animation video. Um, back then, like uh, in the cinemas, to educate them about, easily educate them, digest, put it in bites so people can understand. And, and they managed to take this multi-billion dollar uh, kind of industry and, and put it in every aspect of life, whether it's a, a commercial or a cinema or in cinema or in TV, uh, whether it's for, the, for to inform me about something or whether it's to pure entertainment. I'll give you this rationale. It's like going to a museum as a grown-up, and then you say, oh, uh, I want to go see the photography uh, exhibition. And I finish that because it's photography, I understand, I see live, type, live pictures. And then I want, I want to take you to the, to the painting section, and you go like, no, 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 no. I, I used to paint in nursery and kindergarten, and uh, it's, painting is not for me. You miss out on the Monets and the Van Goghs and everything. It's, it's a medium, and you, it's, it's only because in your head, the way you have perceived this medium is by you painting. Uh, what what's that painting you have behind you, uh, Aida? Oh, this is um, on my um, last birthday. Uh, yes. I decided to take my friends and I, about uh, fifteen of us, to the beach. And there are two students um, who are art graduates who have normal jobs. Decided to just um, paint on the beach, and they give you the canvases. So they tell you, just paint what you see. So, you know, this is what I saw. And uh, they just give you the art brushes. They show you just a couple of techniques and then they just let you run wild and free. I have to tell you that that day was uh, expected rain. It only rained after we finished painting, thank God. And it was the windiest day that we had <laughs> in, in Dubai on that day, but we still, I still managed to get something out of it. So it really means something very sentimental to me because it was the day of my birthday. So it was a, I just re-gifted myself, essentially. So you see, the painting has a, a huge effect on you. And, uh, and again, same thing with animation. It's a medium, like painting, like photography, yes. like, like live action movies. The thing is, I think it, it will take us some time to kind of shift uh, the, 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 you know, the, the whole thinking of, of the nation or people or perceptions. Yeah, agreed. Um, uh, Harry, you mentioned uh, earlier, and now I want to uh, touch upon education because, you know, we mentioned it a, a few times when we had our chat and it's been talked about a little bit during our session here as well. And uh, you said a really key word. Um, I love the word uh, sustaining or, uh, you know, sustainability because I think people just uh, associate it with recycling products. Um, but sustaining an industry such as animation and taking not just that industry so that it's consistently embedded as part of an educational structure because you don't you you have painting as part of like a you know elementary school as you mentioned and sometimes it's there as a subject like extracurricular subject but it's not there as part of your everyday life so you just uh, assume that it's just an optional thing when actually it's part of our everyday life so how, in your opinion, do you think, A, number one, can we sustain the animation industry so that it continues to grow? Uh, and number two, uh, from an educational perspective, how do you think we can encourage the youth uh, and embed it as part of cultural programming within the educational system as well? Sustain with animation, uh, with uh, whatever happens, it will stronger. So when you go, when you see the kids and the babies these days, the preschool kids, what they do, they watch contents. Yes. Yeah. It it it's just a changing of the the platform you watch. When I was a kid, we just TV is the only platform. But mm. these days, they can watch the mobile phone and pad and just television and, and they can watch it in every time, anywhere they can watch it. What they do watch? Animation, animated contents. That's what they watch. That's what they growing up with. It's like uh, air and food you eat and drink water. It's just a part of their life. So I can ensure that when they grown up, mm. they are more 
animated synthetic uh, cultures they have. Yeah. You, you can stop that. It, it, it's a, it just happened. So to my generation and Muhammad and Aida, maybe your generation, you, you are the, we are the generation who think that I have to watch this one animation. I have to watch, I like this. But to the next generation, it's not a matter of like it or not. It's just uh, part of their life. Mm. They cannot separate it. They cannot think without the animation when they were grown up, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Mm. And maybe you can feel the same shift these days when there is a presidential election. What they do? Yes, they do. They make a live action ad, but yeah. They make animate, animated content with their career and their promise something. Yes. Why? Because that's a, animation is the easiest way to communicate. Mm. So simple and so powerful. Mm. That's that. why kids love that. Yes. That's why kids love that. They just uh, instantly they touch and feel it, like it or dislike it. It's yeah. very simple. So I'm, that's I'm why I'm struggling with my boys who now want to be superheroes when they grow up. So I, I, I sure. want to say thank See? you for that <laughs> industry for entertaining, but also thank you for all, all the hospital visits as well from all the jumping and the punching. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and so on, on the education front, um, I know you talked about, you know, it being a part of, you know, it's, it's going to be a consistent thing within people's lives, you know, so it's, it's not going to be a struggle to say, oh, no, I have to watch it. But, you know, do, do you believe that the educational system plays a really important role, at least in embedding animation as part of, you know, consistent learning as well or sustained learning? Sure, that's a very important question. And that, that's what the present governments uh, do not think seriously hmm. because they don't have experience. They do not know what to do with the animation. They just think... Animation is uh, one part of industry. Mm. Maybe most of the grown-ups think that way. Politicians and businessmen think that way. But again, as I said, kids grown up with the animated content. Yeah. They cannot be separated from it. Yeah. So to the uh, government and you know, when, when you have a curriculum, you have to put more animated content because that's the easiest way to communicate. That's the easiest way to educate, to teach uh, to, to the kids because they used to that. They know the animation better than anyone. Agree. Yeah. But the teachers and the programmers, they do not understand. They do not know the animation then the students they teach. So that is the gap. So that is the gap we have to narrow. Like people like Muhammad, you, you are the one who make the gap narrow. And if you make the narrow one, then it will be a big boom in the global market. Agreed. And, and so now shifting to Mohammed as well, um, the, both the similar questions, but I'd really like for you, Mohammed, to also maybe talk about some of the initiatives because you've done quite a lot, um, not just in your own uh, projects, but also sustaining it in multiple spheres. Like, you know, we have the merchandise in the back, you know, we, you've worked with several entities to co-develop certain things with the backdrop of Farid. You know, you've had the show Mendoos, you've had the show Siraj as well. And a lot of them have a very uh, educational realm to it. So I feel that it's a combination of sustainable development and education from your part as well. Edu edutainment, I would like to call it. Yeah, I think you hit on the key, uh, on the big subject and the big keyword, uh, edutainment. The thing is, uh, either, I mean, um, unfortunately, there is a resistance when it comes uh, to uh, fusing entertainment with education. For some reason, uh, the, the norm was that uh, education is education, entertainment is uh, something we, 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 that does not gel well. Actually, what Ari said is very normal. It's normal for me as a kid to watch animation. It's normal for me to love animation. It's normal for me to go to school and 
maybe not absorb the the, um, the classes uh, and the subjects so well because maybe the form of educating me was uh, is not to the realm that I understand or I can grasp. For example, imagine in the old days, you know, you go to school and the way they teach you is by you know reading a book or uh, or uh, you know solving an exercise. That whole medium, that trend has shifted. Now education has shifted not only online, but it's it's more interactive. It is more something that I can see without uh, um, forcing you know kids to kind of think it's uh, school. Um, unfortunately, you know it, it it is so crucial for those this generation and the next generation, and it's so crucial for them to be. Um, to have all the tools they need to make it for the future jobs. So uh, uh, there's a junction there uh, in, in, in educating uh, kids, whether it's working through the Ministry of Education, whether it's working with other educational entities, there seems to be a, a fear to, uh, a, 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 to adopt uh, an animation, entertainment, interactive kind of, um, uh, kind of uh, example here or model. And if they say yes, and if they do come back saying, no, 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 we've, we've been working on it, we're going all digital and everything is okay. The thing is, you're not the kings of content. Yes. And that's another thing. Having the platform, buying an iPad is one thing. Uh, getting a projector is another thing. Creating content that is uh, communicating the curriculum is one thing. Communicating, communicating the curriculum in an entertaining way is another thing. Thirdly, competing with other content on TV, so it, you, you, you just want to make sure that, and you know what, uh, if you look at the global image when it comes to, let's say, each country's effort to make sure that their youngest generation or the younger generation is being really given the tools to be amazing in the future, you know, and what that costs, it's, it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the damage that we will have to go through as parents and other uh, and the, you know the next generation of fathers who will start to let go mm -hmm. of many things just to become part of that global family and that global family is something that we don't control and the yeah. value of that global family is not necessarily something i want to instill in my kids part of it is so it is very important to not just look at it from a way saying we as a collective of countries or a country are doing this because we're investing this much and we're getting the best people in the world to do this for you. No, you need to actually make sure that you do it with the people who live here, whether it's uh, Lamtara or other companies that, that really think about the values you want to instill in an Emirati way or a Kuwaiti way or a Saudi way. Uh, and and we have a saying in, in Arabic, uh, you know, let the baker make the bread. So that is, uh, uh, yeah, so the, it's very essential that we understand that the trend is shifting somewhere else and we don't want to play catch up. We want to be with, you know, on the, on the cusp of that trend. Yeah, or out of the curve. Some very, very valid points there. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, uh, maybe one or two more questions, but uh, for our viewers, uh, this is an opportunity for you guys to send in your questions. Um, as we're about uh, T minus 16 uh, minutes uh, before the close of our session. And it's been super interesting and uh, some very, very good, uh, uh, very, some very good insights in there as well. It feels super privileged to just be sitting in a, a similar Zoom room with, uh, with these two gentlemen, these amazing minds in there as well. Um, so I feel a cartoon uh, coming up or I feel an animation coming up. So now I'm going to go into a, some very uh, strong uh, questions, but hopefully that actually develops into something that's a little bit more tangible. Um, you know, you, uh, both of you have mentioned, you know, co-development, co-production and uh, co-investments uh, to a certain level. Um, so I want to understand a little bit more, you know, from your perspective, how can both Korea and the UAE maybe look at, you know, story, character development that's appealing, not just to both countries, but also to uh, constituents that basically absorb that content. I know we've touched upon it a little bit and we've mentioned it in, in, in multiple series and questions as well. Um, I also uh, want to understand, you know, we, you know, the, uh, I, I only found out, you know, from Mr. Harry as well, you know, there's a lot of pre-production work, main production and post-production. So where does that kind of stand? Because this takes uh, it to an elevated position where 
you know, you're, you're basically merging or submerging two different cultures together. And then from an investment perspective, now the investment, uh, you, people automatically think dollar sign, <laughs> they think money, but I think investment also is in terms of IP, knowledge, resourcing, time. Um, so uh, I'm going to throw this out and, uh, you know, uh, feel free to whoever wants to start right now, because I believe um, that this would be a very strong um, imposition for people to just kind of absorb as well and potentially even just maybe uh, align, you know, the stars and make something happen post uh, this cultural week as well. Gentlemen. Right. If I do, May. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we have to define the core development like a collaborate something. It, yes. I do not think that the co-production is like a sharing the work. Mm. Because the studio Mokoji, which I'm working as a vice president, is a studio. We do a planning, pre-production, and main production, and post works. And let's say, Mohammed, you also have a studio who does this almost the same pipeline. And so when you say co-production, we may say, okay, we share the pre-production, we share the main production, and we share the post-production. Yes, that, that has been a, a co-production uh, more than yeah. 10 years ago. So maybe we do a pre and post work and you do a main production work. That called co-production. But to me, uh, which I'm, we've done with the US companies saying that uh, you do what you're good at and we do what we good at and we can collaborate. So in detail, let's say Mohammed, if you have an idea, the storylines and characters which are appealing to your country, you just have one copy of that uh, log line and, and you talk to me and I said, hmm, that's a very interesting idea. And but I have a background of marketing. All right, so how about the packaging his idea into a, a pitching to the Korean investors or a global OTT platform companies? Right, Harold, he, this is an idea. Don't ask me where it comes from, but this idea, the storyline is very cool. And the models, the characters, it's very cute. Then how do you like it? Yeah. Right? So uh, right after this, we may have a, a online chit chat next week to visit our studios. And to that uh, time, you can pitch me or no, just uh, talk to me any great storylines you think. And we may add some more line or we can say, wow, that, that's great story. Then how about the character? So uh, it's like a date. You cannot marry that you know, just the first date. You know, maybe 10 or 20 more dates, you'll see, hmm, this guy or this, this girl is good. And this is something very chemical to me, but all right, I can, I can respect the, the other parts kind. So it takes about more than 20 dates. And then you may think seriously, how we can collaborate, how we can marry, you know, the, what our marriage life will be. So it, it, it takes time but it's time to worse to take it. Mohammed? Um, I think people expect what's like, oh, so what your, your sense of collaboration would be? And I think some people will assume, oh, so they will be doing a, an animation show with a Korean character and, a, and an Emirati <laughs> character. This is what collaboration means. That's not what collaboration mm -hmm. means. Um, uh, what, what it does mean, and I think uh, I do agree with Harry, is that this conversation is a very organic conversation. We all have our similar pipelines. We have, uh, of course, each of our companies are driven by talent. We're driven by talent. And as you know, talent is very different from each part of the world and 
uh, you know, uh, we have different skill sets, but we do follow the same pipelines. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'll be have an idea. Maybe I'm strong production uh, in this idea, and Harry can help me produce it. Maybe it's good for me just to brainstorm on consultancy basis. Maybe, maybe I would like to seek uh, my, uh, Harry's uh, advice or help when I want to, uh, you know, for, uh, find global distributors. Uh, distributors. I think it is very important for us, and we agreed this uh, before that, that, you know, this is a beautiful window for me to look into the, uh, the animation industry and marketing the animation industry and developing the animation industry to see that example in Korea and uh, ho hopefully also show Harry our, our humble experience here in, in the Middle East when it comes to, uh, to creating this kind of uh, uh, content. And I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure um, we'll find some kind of uh, something very interesting to work on. Love it, love it. Um... Thank you so much. I, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because I think, uh, you know, sometimes they say the clash of worlds or the, the clash of ideas usually generate something bigger, you know. It's, uh, um, so we do have some audience questions and I really want to focus on that. I'm also very conscious of time. So I'm going to limit everybody to about a 30 second answer. So we're going to do some quick uh, rush through. We'll probably take two difficult questions. Um, a little bit of fun stuff. Favorite animation as you grew up, Harry? Top of your head. <laughs> Majinga Z. Majinga. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Mohammed. Uh, Sindibad. Allah. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Lots of memories here. Lots of memories. Okay. Um, uh, what uh, is more important in a project? Artistic high quality graphics, strong plot, storylines, or all of them, or something else. Harry. If I pick, if I pick one of one of them, I pick a storyline. Great, Mohammed. All of them. I think it's a complete package. Amazing. Okay. Um, how? Okay. This is a this is a little bit of a tough one. How do we close the gap between the animator's point of view and market demands? when it comes to creating projects? I think we answered a couple of it, but if you wanted anything additional that you wanted to add, um, Harry? The, the question will be that if the animators, yeah. the idea, if, if they can risk their life, we have to respect it. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> uh, that, that's very, because without the passion, we get, you get nothing. So, uh, but, you can ask the, the animators and the story writers that uh, here is what's going on in the market. Mm. This is what the markets are looking for. And you have to, as a producer's point, I have to push real hard to have the story in reflection of the, the market trend. Mm. Because I am the one finally pitching and sales the, the content. So. That yeah. content should be that I can 100% understand, so. I, th I, I think from my perspective, uh, I think it's very important to be mindful of the trends because you're, in the end, you're developing, we're always developing commercial content. Let's not forget, we are very artsy, it's fun, it's very nice, but in the end of the day, we want to make money, otherwise we cannot sustain ourselves. So it's very important that we, uh, we like check the trends and for example, if collectibles, uh, is, a, is a big trend when it comes to merchandising, then maybe we should, in our creative minds, find a product that serves them. Okay, another fire through. Okay, we're, we're at six minutes, T minus six. What is the first step that one should take to be a successful animator? Go into marketing. <laughs> the first step, you have to see the, see the reality. Mm. Animator's job and the marketing, marketer's job is not a fantasy, what you see, what you imagine, and what you hear. You have to see it yourself. You have to visit the nearest animation studio and to see how they work 24 hours. Yeah. And the marketer's point, marketing guys, they just go to the uh, can and enjoy the food and wine and party. No, that's just a part of it. That's just a very simple part of it. You have to prepare 
the more than 10 times to yeah. get into that market. So if you understand the reality, and if you still think it is a, your job and do it, but if not, don't do it. Yeah. I think, I think the question is, if I understand that kind of question coming from this part of region, mm -hmm. uh, I think being an animation director or somebody who's, because being an animator, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're one person from probably 70 or 80 or 90 people at, or other animators doing something for a show, you're part of a big group. Uh, uh, so if you are asking, if the question was how to become an animator in, mm -hmm. in our part of the region, it's, it's still very raw because there is no industry. But if you want to be into animation, I think mm -hmm. what's the first step you want to you want to do is number one, really believe in yourself, have the capacity to to come to the problem with animation. It's a long format medium, and it took it sometimes it takes years to kind of for the vision to kind of come out. So you need to have that maintained energy level. Like if I shoot a movie, I will be done in thirty days. When I do an animation show, it takes me more than a year. Yeah. So. So you need to have that sustained energy to make sure and the creativity to see yourself through this. Um, from the projects that you've worked on, what would you say is the one that's closest to your heart? Your best friend, Harry, you said animation is, is a friend. Which one is your BFF? Everyone has a BFF. Oh, the one I, I produced? Yes. Oh, the... Fish and chips. I love which that. Is, yeah, fish and chips, which co-produced with France when I was in some generation. Very cool. And Hamed? For me, it will be the fifth season of Reach is is my the closest one to my heart. Okay. Why is that? Because I think uh, from all the seasons, it's the one season that I think I reached the matureness or the brand also reached mature, uh, a maturing level. So I, I was well capable of my tools, very strong when I came to, to executing. And, you know, from the first season and the second season, I think this was the kind of the, the galvanizing moment for me. All right, we have one that's a little bit more inspirational, which I wanted to keep actually as advice, but, you know, somebody asked um, what, if they face resistance from family, friends, et cetera, to get into this industry, how do they overcome it? 30 seconds. Life is very short. <laughs> love that. <laughs> yeah. So true. You have to do what you love. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Love that. I think persistence. Persistence. <laughs> and time that? No, I think we are now very lucky in, in, in the UAE that the, 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 the folk, you know, there is a lot of trust when it comes to, to uh, you know, to giving people the opportunity to, to go where they want and study new things. The government is really promoting us to go into new fields and niche fields. And Alhamdulillah now with, whether it's with me or my colleagues in animation in the UAE, we've set a benchmark. So I think there is, there is, there is money to be made. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good. There's, there's light after the tunnel and some laughs as well. Um, I just wanted to ask if you had any final words, um, starting with you, Harry, that you wanted to close off as well as Mohammed, so we could uh, bid farewell to our uh, followers. I also wanted to thank uh, the Ministry of Culture and Youth as well before I hand it over. Harry? Okay. Thank you for the time. And uh, I say the marketer, marketing guy and also animators, they should be friends, but it's hard to be a friend. But, both of them are the two pillars to sustain and uh, the animation industry. For me, I would love to thank you guys for allowing us again to express this medium. It's a beautiful medium. It's an amazing medium. We do need this medium uh, more here in the Middle East than, than ever before uh, for the tolerance aspects, for the understanding aspects and really for the education and entertainment uh, aspects. Uh, and uh, I hope these kind of talks will you know, move us forward. 100% agree with you. 
Um, again, Harry Yoon and Mohammed Saeed Harab, I absolutely want to thank you for allowing me to moderate this particular session. It has been quite animated, I have to say. I also learned quite a lot that I possibly didn't know and, and the hard work, I call it the iceberg effect where people only see the top and they don't see all the hard work uh, or the drilling effect where the, you know you just stop drilling and you don't work hard enough or long enough you know, for the passion. So uh, both of you are very exemplary in your field. Uh, I want to thank the Ministry uh, of Culture and Youth as well for giving us the opportunity and thank the viewers as well. And I uh, just want to mention that there is a fourth talk at 6.30 featuring Suad Hamadi, Shams uh, Shams and Anura Choi to discuss experiences and culture immersion. Uh, as we're hitting the weekend, I want to say God bless, have a wonderful weekend and speak soon. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.